Welcome aboard the news review segment of the AM show. But right before we dig in, you know your health is your wealth. I mean, it's, it's tripe knowledge, but how are you taking care of your health? Don't be one of those who go like, oh, well, it's expensive if you go for some of these checkups. So for that reason, I will not check myself out. The cost of remedying the situation if you get ill, no one wants to get there. And you know that. So I'm proffering for you this morning, even if you had that concern, there's good news for you. It's courtesy of Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. They help us bring you this segment every morning. Now, here's what they're offering you. If you're a man, especially if you've hit 40 and above, check your prostate. They are offering that service to you, the screening, for free. If you're a woman, what's your fertility status, if I may ask? Do you know? And if you don't, are you not concerned? You can also get free screening at Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. Now, here's where you can locate them across the length and breadth of our dear country. Here in Accra, they are at Spintex opposite the Shell sign board. Kumase Kronomabwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex. There's Stakra Dianaji State. There's Tema Community 22. There's Tichiman Hanswa. There's Isiyama in Zima. If you'd like to call them, which I highly recommend you do, the numbers are 244 867 068 or 0274 234 321. End point homeopathic clinic, the end to chronic disease. But just the start of the news review, guess who joins us? The NDC's parliamentary candidate for South Tong, Maxwell Lukoto, is our guest. I love that armchair, uh, the couch you're in there. Hey, you are chilling, oh. You're chilling and you're smiling at me this morning. That's good to know. I, I wanted to get you to smile and I've achieved my objective. So, Maxwell, good morning. Thank you for joining us on the AM show. Good morning, my brother. How are you? I am very well. It's, it's another brilliant morning. I am rather tired, but it's, it's okay. It's part of life. Here we are doing what we do best. Um, where do you find yourself today? Are you in your constituency or back in Accra? Yeah, I'm in the constituency trying to put things together, especially getting to the end of the year. It's also unfortunate I lost my senior brother in that oh. car accident about three weeks ago, and I'm putting things together to be able to send him home on the 23rd of December this year. So I'm still around trying to put things together. Our condolences, our sincere condolences. And, and you know, that Thank reminds you. me as well of the, the gory statistics when it comes to uh, road accidents in our country, among others. Um, so our heartfelt condolences to you on that. But even as we proceed, um, is there any matter since you find yourself in your constituency? I think recently, uh, it was just yesterday, I read a story about, I don't know whether it was Mepa or some other place, but they were saying that on the back of the Akosombo Dam spillage and the flooding that ensued, you know, it's contaminated their sources of water, that they were in a precarious situation and that they needed water, drinking water. Now, you know, water is life. You can't joke with it. Um, is that situation in, in your area as well? Is that the situation? No, generally, when the flood occurred, uh, yes, of course, the water was contaminated, but uh, for my understanding, those things, uh, after a little while, the sediments would have settled or washed away in any form. And so the report we get from the Ghana Water Company is that it was, say, after some few days during the flood, they go back to pump water through our pumps. And so... I want to believe that it is not as precarious as people may want to paint it. Of course, yes. So if you are not too sure, uh, you may want to rely on some form of treated water. Uh, possibly we, we uh, outside the catchment area of the spillage where the uh, sachi water is being produced. Of course, so if you have somebody producing sachi water in Sugakope, Tefle, Sukwe, and all those, the likelihood that the draw water directly from the Volta River is high, but we also know that some individuals take water from the borehole system underground. Uh, we can't be too sure whether there has been some uh, this thing uh, of the water through the ground, but usually with this underground water, it's not too likely it happens. And so, even during that time, we rely more on those who use the boreholes than those who fed, uh, get the water directly from the Volta River before treating. And so some other, this thing we are doing is that we are drilling more boreholes and repairing the old ones that have been more functioning for some time. I have to do some in Fume and also in Tepler. Just recently, one of our brothers, Stephen Adjokate, also had to come to drill 
some bubble at the flood for us. And so we are looking for alternative ways of getting portable water for our people. And But it is not as bad as people may want to pay them. Because if you were, would have been recording some waterborne diseases within our hospitals and clinics. But fortunately, uh, we've been able to put a lot of these things under control. The only challenging thing for now is that relocation of people whose homes uh, have uh, uh, broken down during the flood. You know, most of them are switched homes, mad houses. And so once the water settles under there for two, three days, it is gone. So it is hard to rebuild these homes. That is becoming a challenge for us within the catchment area. And thankfully, some companies, some groups, yesterday I saw even the AG department donating some 125,000 cities to the North Town MP for some resettlement of the people. And so once we can get these things and get some bags of cement, iron rods and uh, roofing sheets for some people, uh, it will be able to bring them back to their normal lives. And so that is where we are now. Well, that's uh, definitely heartwarming, and uh, we pray for the very best for our brothers and sisters in those catchment areas. Let's get into the papers now, starting with the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Government plots new anti-corruption action plan in first quarter 2025 to replace NACAP 1. That's according to the Attorney General. There's been talk about decoupling the office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice so that we can have, instead of everything we're seeing with the office of the special prosecutor we can have two different entities one representing government and advising government like with um uh, judgment debts and other such things and another one basically representing the public interest and in fighting corruption but uh, we'll get into that story and find out what this new proposal entails NCCE rallies Ghanaians to participate in district level elections December 19. I have heard the Electoral Commission talk about the fact that they are optimistic that for the first time in two plus decades, I, I think the last time we hit over 50% was the 88 89 period, which would then mean that it's over three, probably uh, three decades plus, yes. And uh, whether we can hit 50% plus again, that's, that's a matter of concern. But if we did, it would point to a deepening of democracy at the grassroots level. GCB unveils new mobile app and two policemen, four foreign nationals arrested for Galamse in Krokosua Hills in the Juaboso uh, Forest. We'll be discussing that, delving into it deeper later on the show. But let me bring you uh, those stories. <clears throat> so government... The government of Ghana is in the process of developing a new strategic framework for fighting corruption. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Mr. Godfrey Yabwadame, uh, has announced. He was speaking at the 10th conference of the state's parties uh, to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption on Tuesday at the World Congress Center, Atlanta, United States of America. To be called the National Anti-Corruption Action Plan 2, that is not NACAP 2, Mr. Dame said NACAP 2 would be in place by the first quarter of 2025. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice told participants that Ghana's anti-corruption effort had been relatively better coordinated and systematic, resulting <laughs> in significant progress since the adoption of NACAP in 2014. Mr. Dame said digitization of ports, pension schemes, the land registry, digital property addressing system, and mobile money interoperability systems helped to enhance transparency, accountability, and efficiency in the public sector. My question for you, though, and, and, and let me just bring this in. At the tail end, he says, when passed into law, um, the conduct of public officers law would address issues like financial portfolios held by public officers before assuming public office, links to family businesses, improper enrichment, care of public property, professional practices, uh, property self-dealing, partiality in the performance of duties, sexual harassment, abuse of women and use of public or confidential information to further private interests. What do you make of this, uh, Maxwell? Yeah, so <clears throat> like we all know on Monday, the 10th session of the UN uh, Convention on Corruption was held and the Attorney General was also there. It's uh, for about 190 states that attend every year. Of course, Ghana has signed on to this convention and uh, the Attorney General was there making this declaration. But for me, at the end of the day, there isn't anything new that he said that should tickle my fancy. All the things he's talked about are things that we know about. As a declaration, we have been aware that it is done in some kind of secrecy that 
the public is not aware of what anybody has declared until something undoubted has happened. Of course, uh, putting people's information across is also something we want to look at. But if this information is not, we are not privy to this information, and then it's only when something happens that has to be pulled out from an envelope. How assured are we that whatever the person declared the first bit is even right? And so for me, the right information bill has been passed into law. Is it as effective as we want it to be when you go to ask for the information they give to you or they will put it under some national security uh, classification and not give it to you? Uh, the digitalization we have spoken about. Yes, digitalization is there, but we still have interface with our people. A lot of things happen. Last commission, which I am part of, Yes, we have the digitalization, but the people who are fronting some of these uh, systems who intentionally make it not functional so that you want to avert to a manual form of doing things by which way they would also get their card. It's unfortunate that it's the same Ghanaians that we are fighting for to eliminate corruption are the ones that inadvertently would want to promote it in their own way and benefit from. And so for me, I believe that we have had a lot of laws that controls and uh, corruption or anti-corruption. The more we do, the more we drop in the index. Uh, the last time the index came, I think, was way around 52 or thereabout. And for me, we need to practically tell ourselves that it's something we all need to fight. You talk to the ordinary Ghanaian, and their perception is that once you become a public officer or a politician, you have to get yourself involved. It's funny the way majority of us think, but it should be some attitudinal change and some review of thought from us as individuals before we even get to public spaces or we even get to uh, political positions so that once we know that there are people behind who are watching our ways and our steps, we'll be able to do things right. For instance, me as a professional, sometimes or usually when I'm going on air to speak on national issues, my president will call me behind the scene or send me a message, we are watching you. And so I know that there are people who are watching me and I'm careful the things I say and the things I do. By that, I am being guided, not necessarily by a legal statute, but because I know there are people around who will condone, knowing who I am, will not be happy to see me involved in some things. So for me, let us rather practicalize these things than rather going to give nice speeches and promising <coughs> heaven when we are already here. Promising heaven when we're already in corruption hell, huh? It's interesting. I, I met an elderly man yesterday who was so upset with the system and with corruption in uh, Ghana. But anyway, at least strides to be made. I'm at least happy about this law, at least NACAP 2. He mentions that since 2014, there has been some progress on that front. Though, in, in real terms, both the perception of corruption and the reality of corruption, I cannot say that we've made any progress. But something I'm excited about has to do with the fact that this law then would address issues like financial portfolios held by public officers before assuming public office, links to family business, improper enrichment, among others. Um, I was just sharing yesterday in Nigeria a story about one of the generals, he was in charge of armament, procurement, and all of that. This person supposedly has some 10 buildings across the world, US, UK, and the rest. The latest was over $1 million. Put together, they are all worth over $10 million. This person's salary in a year, in 10 years, would not be able to purchase one of such buildings. But that's Africa for you. And that is our bane, which is why I always go back to Professor Chinua Achebe of Blessed Memories book, the Trouble with Nigeria. You can pick that book, okay? It's a little book. It's a booklet, if you like. You can pick that book, The Trouble with Nigeria, written somewhere in the 80s, <clears throat> 1980s. And it is the same picture you would see today of Nigeria and of Ghana. You can just pick the name Nigeria out and put Ghana there, and it will fit perfectly. I don't know any, any yeah, okay, you so know, my problem people that can live like this. Yeah, so we as individuals growing, even from the basic schools, going to secondary school, investing before we get to public service. What is the perception of the African about corruption? And so for me, let us begin from there, trying to cut it from the top where politicians or public office holders are the ones that are to be held accountable. No, let us begin from the basis so that we know that we are growing with an attitude that when we get there, we will not be passed on. So it's something we all as Ghanaians 
to go into the conversation and try to put things right. It, 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 the, the pressure from individuals as soon as they hear you are a public office holder or you are a politician, it, it, it sometimes the one that puts some people into trying to satisfy them by doing some of the things they do. So for me, it's a bigger conversation than saying that we are putting in laws, we are putting in statutes to regulate some of these things. It should rather more be to towards attitude than other things. I hear in Japan or something, when you drop your wallet or your phone somewhere, you go and come back after two days and it is there for you to come and pick. These are things that we must begin to do as Ghanaians. But if people see you in public office, and you have a, a chamber at home, and you are not able to change it to a four-bedroom house after four years, then they say you are a big fool. It makes people begin to think that, ah, then I have to do something else to satisfy the majority of the people. So for me, let us drift more towards this attitude, that change, and change of attitude and mind in how these things must happen, rather than just trying to pull us to prevent people from doing it. All right, let's stay on the standpoint of corruption very briefly. OSP prosecutes four corruption-related cases in court. That story also on page three of the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Now, the proceedings in four alleged criminal trials of eight persons, including Ms. Cecilia Abnadapa, a former Minister of Sanitation and Water Resources, are pending in different courts across the nation. The cases are different from the OSP's interim applications where the court... Uh, has barred the office from making arrests, conducting investigations, or seizing assets of individuals implicated as suspects and respondents. The prosecution closed its case in the trial of Alexander Kwabanasa for Kantanka, the municipal chief executive for Dwabin in the Ashanti region, for corruption in respect of a public election. You would recall that in recent times we exposed some people at the latest orphan constituency primaries of the MPP who were who had taken envelopes, among others. Now, the prosecution closed its case, um, like I mentioned in that one. He had been charged, in, in the person of uh, Alexander Safokantanka, he had been charged with 26 counts of corruption in respect of a public election. The court is scheduled to make a decision on the defense's submission of no case on January the 23rd, 2024. The OSP also closed its case <clears throat> in the prosecution of Sumaila Abdulrahman, and three others of the Northern Development Authority corruption scandal, in which the former chief executive and his two deputies and a private contractor are facing 11 charges in respect of bloated contracts for a poverty eradication program in excess of 5 million Ghana cities. That, that issue is still fresh in my mind. And a number of them. Uh, the case of the Republic versus Ajanim Wating Ajay, you remember, former chief executive of public procurement authority and his brother-in-law Francis Kweku Ahen has been adjourned to March the 4th, 2024 for continuation of cross-examination of the first prosecution uh, witness. There's also the case of uh, Madame Dapa in there. Then I'll tie in this story and then come to you for your reactions, Maxwell. Two policemen, four foreign nationals arrested for Galamse in Krokosuya Hills, Jwaboso uh, Forest. Now, eight people including two policemen and four Chinese nationals, were arrested on Monday by the Rapid Response Unit of the Forestry Commission for allegedly engaging in illegal mining activities in the Krokosua Hills Forest Reserve in the Juaboso Forest District of the Western North Region. The two policemen, uh, whose names have been withheld, carrying AK-47 assault rifles and other suspects, are currently in the custody of the Western North Police Command. The suspects were identified as Wen Shu Yu, 30, Wen Yong Cheng, 30, Wen Fu Kin, 58, Li Pen, 60, Edward Owusu, 25, Christy Frank, 42, Abudu Ramani, 41, and Joe Naburi, 37. Where will you go into a house and meet a family and speak to the father and have the father assist you rob that family? His own house. But that is. Oh, that, is, in Ghana. that is what we are seeing here. We are assisting yeah. others to rob us. What are your thoughts? Only in Ghana you can see these things happening. And so you see, going back to my original case, that it is more about it in that chain, our love for country and what we believe should be the situation so that all of us enjoy. If people feel that they are the only ones that need to take the bigger chunk of the cake from the national level, then they look at or they look out for schemes to be able to do this. Uh, the OSB, yes. Like I said, our vice president will continue to tout his digitalization achievements and what is 
doing to the anti-corruption drive. But can that prevent Sister Adapa from stocking her home <coughs> with so much cash? Can, can it prevent the Chinese from going to the bush to go and mine with the assistance of the Ghanaians themselves? So, so for me, some of these things, yes. Ajabin, uh, you see, go on, go on and fight. You have decided to take the fight. You are leading it. Uh, whether you are getting frustrated, most of us are encouraging you to go ahead. And surely there will be light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we should encourage him to do more and make sure that we need some of these things in, uh, uh, in, in the back. Yes, uh, this political situation where in the primaries people were seen planting cash in envelopes and saying that this might give me this might, this might give me this might. Yes, those are things we need to do. But for me, these are small, small things that would want to push the situation higher and then look for the bigger fishes. Somebody who has gone to the police and that we give you an envelope, maybe 200 cities, 300 cities in the name of transport. And then, but it, it, it's unfortunate that they could go to the extent with the bravado display it on live TV and then say that, yes. so some of those things, yes, we need to prevent them. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know as far as how much far uh, uh, Kisia Jebe will be able to prove these cases, but are they the bigger ones we need to be chasing? So for me, the Chinese nationals and that has <coughs> been prosecuted good. Uh, Aisha Wan has been prosecuted. I don't know why these Chinese would go to the extent to still be doing the things we hear and see them do. <coughs> uh, so it's because Ghanaians are aiding them on and then supporting them to do the ill to our land, to our water bodies, and to our environment. And so for me, the Ghanaians should be given a harsher punishment than the Chinese national because, like you said, you come to somebody's home, the father will teach you the money is here, the jewelry boss is there, go and take it. How, 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 how can we do this to ourselves? It, it's so unthinkable. And for me, uh, we, we should begin to, 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 to change our attitude. We need to. We need to. We need. This won't happen in China. It will not. It will not happen in China. So why would it happen in Ghana? Because we don't love ourselves, we don't love our environment, we don't love our other bodies, and we don't love our land. That is the only way by which we can poison it. And so it brings me back to the issue of poison for gold. These are the situations we find ourselves in, and it's so bad, my brother. Let's get into some other stories. Uh, the Daily Guide this morning, a breakdown of MIF's investment in Atlantic Lithium. This story is not going anywhere. There's been a lot of talk about it. Minority chases Bank of Ghana governor's removal. NPP mourns Amma Busia and, of course, our hearts uh, go out to the entire MPP fraternity and, of course, to her family as well. Digitalization eliminates corruption. AG tells UN. I've already delved into that story. Cecilia Dapa has made five others sweat over bail. And then GCB Bank unveils enhanced mobile app. And um, let's get into those stories now. I'll start with uh, this one. Let me go here. Okay, so Chief laments Bimbagu South bad roads. As for bad roads, um, I don't want to. I don't want to make. I, I don't want to form the nexus. I, I I want to put in words. So let me leave it there. The chief of the Bimbago traditional area, Chief Ubo Sigom Daniel Tibela, has lamented the bad nature of the road network in his traditional area. According to the chief, farmers in the area have recorded post-harvest losses due to the bad nature of roads. He indicated that the biggest market in the northern sector was located at Bintri in the northeast region. But farmers in these areas were poor because their road network was not motorable to transport their farm produce to the market. Now, who calls them? The Minority Caucus in Parliament has officially requested the presence of Dr. Ernest Addison, Governor of the Bank of Ghana, to receive their petition calling for his removal from office. In October of this year, the minority group took to the streets and marched to the central bank's premises to demand Dr. Addison's resignation. However, their efforts to submit the petition were hindered as the Bank of Ghana governor did not meet with the minority caucus. The security personnel designated to receive the petition on behalf of Dr. Addison uh, were rejected by the minority group. Now, in a statement released on Monday, December the 11th, 2023, and signed by minority leader Cassia Latoforsen, it stated... We therefore write to request your availability at the premises of the Bank of Ghana head office for the honorable members of the minority caucus in parliament to hand over our petition to you personally. All right. Uh, it, there's an interesting question that has been posed, though. You want me sacked, uh, yet you want me to receive your petition, the same petition that is asking for me to be sacked. Uh, 
it's a bit comical, it's a bit funny, but that's the reality uh, as well. Whether he'll receive it or not is another uh, matter. Of course, it goes according to the Constitution and the rights that we all um, have. Let me do that story on page six, and then uh, we can come back to other stories. So, Madam Ama Bame Buzia, an elder of the New Patriotic Party, has returned to her maker aged 87. A respected personality in local politics, she was the mother, she was the sister of the late academic and politician and Prime Minister Kofi Abrefa Buzia. Last year, she launched her book, Bittersweet Pale of Politics, a political memoir. She received rousing accolades from top political leaders from both sides of the political divide at her, the launch of the memoir. Ama Bamebusia started her education at the Wenchi Methodist School. In class three, she left and finished her education at the Methodist Middle Girls School in Kumasi and later the Komenda Training College. Ama Buzia studied institutional management and catering at the Regent Street Polytechnic in London while in exile with her brother, Dr. Kofi she became the national vice chairperson of the MPP, as well as a member of the Council of State and a former president, J. A. Kufour. May her soul rest in peace. It's a journey we all have to undertake at some point. We pray that while we are here, we'll do God's bidding, fulfill his purpose for our lives. But our condolences once more to her family and to the NPP fraternity. Any quick reactions, Maxwell? Yeah, sure. So, uh, the Bank of Ghana and the Saga, mm. uh, linked to Ken Oforiata, uh, Parliament has called on Ken Oforiata to resign. Uh, the majority led the chorus, minority followed. Uh, at the end of the day, the president promised all of us that they should allow him to go through the presentation of the budget and after that, or even the IMF and the World Bank uh, facility that we were chasing, he asked that they should allow him to go through it, and then he will relieve him of his position, or he himself uh, will kick uh, goodbye to his seat. But unfortunately, the president who doesn't live through to his words has never uh, gone back to think about whatever he told the majority caucus then when they were agitating. Same thing is happening to the governor of the Bank of Ghana. When the whole minority leadership, together with all of them, the caucus decided to go to his office to get a meeting. He decided to send a security man to come and meet them. So, and they decided not to present the petition to him. Now they are calling on him to come to the House of Parliament to come and receive your, your request to be sacked or resign letter. Like you said, it's a comic thing, but you know, Parliament has the power to subpoena or to summon anybody in public office to the House to come and give their report and to do anything that they deem necessary and fit because they have the oversight responsibility over everybody and anybody, same as the president himself has to do there, and give the state of the nation's address to them to tell them, and Ghanaians for that matter, what the situation is. And so, like you said, it's a constitutional matter. And so whether he likes or not, I'm sure that he has to appear and to receive. He, there's one thing receiving the letter in the first place and another thing acting and resigning. But it's only in this part of our world that people don't look at why they should resign. Because, of course, they enjoy the largesse of their offices. And then whatever it is, they, they will always want to benefit from whether they are doing the reasons, the, the, the very assignment for which we have sent them there or not, they would want to hold on. So Jesus comes. And so he would have to appear and do <clears throat> the best he can. All right. On the issue of the bad roads, yes, it's all over. Uh, the year of rules one, year of rules two has been declared by this government, and still we are not seeing anything. All the rules that have started have stopped. Look at the Tema, uh, the Wenya Aplau rule that has started, all those uh, flyovers and interchanges that have been done. They have stopped for so many months, and nothing really is happening to them. Several rules within the Accra, uh, the greater Accra region that have started at Boston and other regions. And so, as for talking about bar rules, the demonstrations, every day we hear of demonstrations, people who fight, people who demonstrate, uh, it's always there. We'll do it and nobody cares. So, I don't know what is going to change. We'll cry every day for our rules.
But when that government even has the resources to fix them, right. it's another matter. Okay. Right. And so but we need to continue to cry. They will come and tell us all the sweet things we would they we don't even want to hear their forcing us to hear that this government in the history of Ghana has done more roots than any other person has done, which are all lies, but they will always force it through. And for me the reality is that we are seeing what is happening on the ground and every day people complain about the situations one right. way or the other. Right. Our condolences to the family the Buzia family. And the elephant family for losing a star of Amma Abuzia is a strong woman. She has risen uh, she, she has risen to all the highest levels in the party leadership, especially under Kufo. And we can only wish her well. At the age of 87, I'm sure she has done his uh, beat, and then she should rest in peace. Thank you. Uh, there's an editorial uh, on page four of the Daily Guide newspaper. OSP, a haunted house. That's the question. OSP, a haunted house. You can check that out. On the international front in that paper, intruders spray colored gas in India Parliament. And uh, it's getting interesting more and more as we see people dissatisfied with leadership and some of the things that happen. Recently, I saw a video. Um, I, I want to believe it is authentic. Of farmers disgruntled farmers somewhere in France spraying manure, liquid, liquid manure, on a government building. And they were allowed to do it in protest because of some farming policies. They did that. Manure, smelly manure, sprayed it on government buildings. I'm talking of spraying, like spraying the whole place like that. Yeah. And uh, here in Ghana, you even want to demonstrate and it becomes a tug of war. Uh, Trump loses immunity bid in Carroll defamation suit. He cannot assert presidential immunity from a defamation lawsuit by writer E. Jean Carroll, who accused him of rape. A U.S. appeals court has ruled, dealing the former U.S. president another legal setback. Here in Ghana, we've made our presidents and others all-powerful, omnipotent. You can't even bring up certain cases against them within a certain period, after a certain period, and all of that. A lot of hogwash, I'm sorry. And we protect all of these people when... We cannot say for a fact that some of them will come or all of them will come and do the right thing, which is also my problem with the ally on uh, importation, because then you give too many wide powers and then you know how it is. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. <laughs> Thai MP convicted for posts insulting the monarchy and Ugandan serial killer sentenced to 105 years in jail. The high court in Uganda's capital, Kampala, has sentenced the 25-year-old serial killer to 105 years in prison. Uh, this one, what can you say? Next time, we'll zoom you. Mm. Anyway, so those are the other stories. I'll just wrap with this so that we go. Business finder, data of citizens critical. Let's address challenges. That's according to the CJ. And I'll do this one. I'll read a bit of it. 68% cut in wash sector funding. Water aid Ghana worried. And I am very worried as well, which is why I'm reading the story. In a sobering analysis of Ghana's 2024 budget, Water Raid Ghana has highlighted a concerning 68% reduction in the allocation for the Ministry of Sanitation and Water Resources compared to the previous year. The total budget for MSWR plummeted from 1,847,454,545 CDs in 2023 to a mere 591,052,000 380 cities in 2024. This drastic reduction is primarily attributed to a staggering 76% decrease in funding from development partners, overshadowing a modest 10% increase in the government's contribution. And that, for sure, will have its impacts. But um, I know some will be concerned, especially as it has to do with the Ministry for Sanitation and Water Resources. You have less than a minute to share your parting remarks, Maxwell. Let's go. Yeah, sure. So data of citizen very important. I think that we joke too much about uh, our private data in this country, and we don't take issues about data collection, data management very seriously. Uh, you see multiple institutions trying to gather data on same individual over the period, and you wonder whether we have a, a data management system that you have a mega data city somewhere that data can easily be gotten from. Right. And uh, the level at which we even share our private data with other unknown individuals, it, 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 it's something that borders on 
some level of criminality because right. how can I receive message from an unknown individual about something that I'm not too interested about? How did he get my telephone number and then my information to be able to send this to me? These are issues about security that Ghanaians do not take serious notice of. And we do this with impunity. And so for me, right. yes, let's tighten our data collection, our data management, and ensure that everything needed about us, we get it sitting right. somewhere. <clears throat> and then at any time, we can recall and okay. make sure that even criminals can, can be gotten easily than we see things happening. This right. Day. You, you go commit a crime and you go stop free. Look at somebody being jailed for 105 years for killing other people. But Ghana, how, what do you see? People do serious things and they are given two, three years. Look, 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 look. Maxwell, thank someone. you, thank you. We, we, we have to go. But I think your point, your point is well made on that. As for our legal system and the dynamics, just like with NACAP 2, there's a whole lot to do there. But uh, we're grateful, as always, uh, that you make the time to join us. Uh, he is NDC's parliamentary candidate for South Dole. Maxwell Lukuto is his uh, name. Thank you so much, sir. Right before we thank go, you. let me... Yesterday, I was at Conversations in the Cathedral, proudly Catholic, hosted that event at the Host Holy Spirit Cathedral. I would like to say a very good morning to His Grace, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, um, John Bonaventure Kofi, uh, for the good work you're doing, and to our Lord Bishops, all of those who made it uh, there. I also say that because yesterday, a woman, a man came to me after the event, elderly man. I, it, it's not the best of things to ask for the person's age. He could be in his 70s or 60s. And he said to me, my wife was here. The whole place was packed. My wife was here. And she called me and said, this gentleman that you watch every day, you are constantly talking about, is hosting this event. This man says he walked from Accra Central and came to the Holy Spirit uh, Cathedral just to see me. I was so touched uh, by that. The name... Herbert Bulle. Herbert Bulle. So, Mr. Bulle, we are grateful that you actually uh, watch us every morning. I am immensely grateful that you, you actually shared that moment uh, with me. And um, just, we pray for the very best for you in uh, life. Mr. Bulle, God richly uh, bless you. I wish my producer would stop speaking in my ears while I am actually uh, sharing my thoughts. Herbert Bulle. Yamin Shaobibri. I really appreciate it. It was so heartwarming, so touching yesterday. The fact that you walked from Accra Central to come to the Holy Spirit Cathedral just to see me. Um, you humbled me. And thank you so much for that honor. Um, we're celebrating two special people today. Tijani Isaka, you sent a message <clears throat> on the live stream. You say, good morning, Benjamin. Today is a special day for me as it is my birthday. I pray for more strength and favor in my endeavors. Tijani, we pray for same for you. May God bless you abundantly, grant you favor, and most importantly, may you live according to his will and for his purpose. We also celebrate our own in-house gentleman, one of the finest, uh, very affable fellow. He's one of our very own, Nicholas Yamwa. My only problem, this dude is trying to grow too quickly. He's attributing age to himself that he is not. But Nicholas, God richly bless you for the good work you do for God and country and for our team. We celebrate you, Nicholas Yamwa. That's the note on which we cap off uh, the news review this morning. Mind you, this segment always brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. They're offering you free prostate screening if you're a man, free fertility screening if you're a woman. Just look out for any of their branches. Here in Accra at Spintex, opposite the Shell signboard, Kumase, Kronumabwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex. There's Takradi Anaji State, Tema Community 22, Techiman Hanswa, and Esiama Enzima. Their call lines, 0244-867-068 or 0274-234-321. End point homeopathic clinic, the end to chronic disease. Bringing us to the start of sports up next.